So, basically, the only reason we're not like, when I was a kid, we said, Ooga Booga, is because our lifespans aren't long enough to... Well, they're long enough to explain a bit of evolution, but not the length of evolution that we as a, as a human race and as a, an animal kingdom and things have experienced. If we could live for three million years, then we could talk about what we've learned since three million years ago. Otherwise, we got to postulate. And I'm thinking chemicals came from outer space or off the Earth's surface, and I mean, the Earth is chemicals from outer space, just forming in a gravitational field, and with electrons passing through at a concentrated point, where there's a lot of water, probably, where there's just a lot of hydrogen, and draws everything else, and creates the poles, and which stay cold, which is interesting, and the planet forms around it, and that's great and fine, and probably there's what we would call life on it then. Just in different the chemicals, it, you'd have to like look at it as a chemical structure. It, only like the chemicals would be there. But I guess then when you want to call it life, that probably happened after the Earth formed, and then maybe water. So I guess water equals life. H2O equals life. Once there's water involved, then it can be life. Otherwise, you would call it chemical compounds and structures. But what about like a sulfuric-based organism? Would it have to have water in it? Would it just be sulfur-based instead of carbon-based? Like I could see those living at the bottom of the ocean. Um... I got a little off track talking about the different bases of uh, possible life. Really, you could take any chemical and make a base out of it and then make a life form around it. Um, but what most interests me about this formation of the Earth is when life started and why it started. And what I'm thinking is maybe there was water and a new chemical was introduced into the water. And really all that happened was there was some sort of reaction between the chemicals that caused a new chemical. And then it happened again and again and again and again and again and again. And then those new chemicals started to form and have chemical reactions with each other and other chemicals. And why it's it's magnetically drawn to the Earth, because the Earth is a magnetic hot spot. All planets are, so it's magnetically drawn to planets and sun, stars and things. So we, I tend to think of it as we drew it here. But what are we? That's the, that's the interesting thing, right? We are in human form right now. Well, I am, as I'm explaining it, but whoever wants to explain it can decide who we, we are. Really, it's, I mean, what? the physical formation, we would have been something a little different three million years ago. Eight billion years ago. Three billion years ago. I think it that's the thing, man. It's not worth postulating about it because I wasn't there. Basically, get spore. It's a uh, maybe the most dynamic game I've played.
I don't know that I call it the best game, but. derailed by thinking of we. There's no we, that's the thing, that's, that's a superimposed objective, conception. Um, it's chemical compounds interacting, and I want to know why they're interacting, how they're interacting. Like, they're interacting right now. Everything in you is a constant chemical reaction. So why is it happening this way? Why are we able to, with a thought, move all these muscles in certain directions? Are we shaping our body? like one of those games where the ball falls on the top and there's all those pegs and it bounces down the pegs and basically we're getting energy from the sun and so it's passing through our system kind of in a randomness that we've kind of preset. So we have control over what we surround ourselves with, which is our system.